Run It Studios is the home of the Run Radio podcast and runradio.net, a podcast and station about the relentless, resilient, and innovative types, inspiring strides in life, business, and beyond. Welcome back to the Run Radio podcast. My name's Trenna Wilcox and Run Radio is all about talking with relentlessly resilient, innovative types. And today we have one of those, my guest, Michael Millward with the Fit For My Age podcast. Welcome. Hello there, Trenna. Nice of you to invite me onto your show. Thank of you very course. much. Thank you for having me on your show as well. We got uh, connected this... through uh, matchmaker.fm and that's where podcasters and guests can connect. And fortunately... Yes. Our paths have crossed, but I want to know why you decided, why fit for my age? Why fit for my age? What a question. <laughs> I should have a really clever answer to that, but um, I think I'd rather go with honest rather than clever. So the honest answer is that um, you reach a point in life where you sort of realize very slowly that you perhaps aren't quite as capable of doing all the things that you might want to be able to do and you then realize that well actually um, if i look to the future i might not be able to do all the things i want to do and mm -hmm. then you start to think about why is that why is it that I can't do the things that I used to do when I was younger? And you then start going to the doctor and they say, well, of course it's your age, you know? And you're thinking uh -huh. like, well, no, it's not because up here I'm feeling sort of like 22 ish from the neck down. <laughs> that ain't the case. <laughs> Yeah. From the neck down, that just isn't happening. And you're thinking like, yeah, why, why is that? Why is that? And part of the mistake that we make is that we, we assume that because we could run miles when we were 22, or we could, you know, stay out partying all night or eat what we now know to be basically junk food, <laughs> that we can still do that. And nobody had really ever told me what fit for my age was, you know, mm. what I should you be able to do when you're 40? Uh, what should you be able to do when you're 50? And then I sort of thought, okay, let's have a look at this. But the, in parallel, there was another thing happening, which was a friend of mine asked me to review a book that they'd written. And I'm an HR professional. I work for an HR consultancy called Abbasida. It means to put into logical order, deal with the rudiments of a subject. And this friend asked me to um, review their book. So I did. And I couldn't find the book on that big, big website that you know, right. has the, the named after the big river. I couldn't find it on there. So I said, why isn't it there? And they said, well, um, it's not going to be on there because it's part of a library that big organizations subscribe to. I thought, okay, let's find out about that. And I contacted the publisher. They looked at the learning resource web shop that I run, which is called Workplace Learning Center. And they agreed to put their library of learning resources, including my friend's book, into there, which was fantastic. And then one of the questions that they asked me was like, Michael, have you ever read any audio books? To which my response was, no, I've never read any, but I have, um, I have listened to a few. And they said, no, that's not what we meant. What we meant was, have you ever read any so that other people can listen to them? And I said, no. And well, we think you've got the right type of voice. So why don't you give it a go? So I did. And that was very successful. And then a technology company who produce podcasting technology, which is the type that I use, Zencaster, contacted me and said, will you join our creator community and publish with us? And I said, I can't, I'm already publishing with this other company. And they said, well, publish something else. So as an HR consultant, I spoke to clients and they told me that our issues are, you know, change management, health and well-being, and work-life balance. And I thought health and well-being, 
I could produce a podcast all about health and well-being. And that became fit for my age. And it was essentially me thinking, what don't I know that I should know that would make it easier for me to be fit for my age? So it then became, well, I don't know about what well, really I should be eating. I don't know which decisions I made when I was 22 are now coming back to haunt me and making it difficult for me to be fit for my age. I don't understand all sorts of different illnesses, what the symptoms are. I don't understand. I don't understand much very, you know, to be honest with you. And, and I've started to talk to people at the gym and you know, friends and neighbors, and they were saying, we don't know either. We have no idea. And I thought, I'm going to answer those questions. I'm going to work out what it is that I need to know in order to be fit for my age. And I need to know what it was that I could have done differently, which would have made it easier to be fit for my age. And lo and behold, a podcast was born and um, doing really well. Thank Excellent. you very much. You know? Well, I'm glad, that, <laughs> I'm glad that you tapped into that resource because there are a lot of people that don't realize the impact of the choices they make daily or even when they're in their 20s, when they feel invincible, can take a toll later on. So what was the number one thing or what few things even stood out to you that you've learned? Uh, there was uh, sugar was one of the big issues that we had with sugar was you know, what sugar does to your body, where we can find sugar in our food, how to look at a meal and decide what order to eat the things on your plate mm. was like, right. You know, one of the big dishes that we have here in the UK is our Sunday, Sunday roast. You know, all the family get together and we have a big piece of meat and all sorts of vegetables and we you know we feast on a sunday after church all this sort of stuff and one of the things that um the, well one of the big parts of that meal is roast beef and yorkshire pudding and my thing is always that i leave until the end the roast potatoes and the yorkshire pudding it's just like just my thing i thought mm -hmm. but actually the way in which you eat that meal is that you have you eat your brightly colored vegetables first, right? Oh, I shouldn't be telling you this. It's on my podcast. You should listen to Fit For My Age and then uh, <laughs> you'll find out more. I will tell you a few more things about it. But, you know, you eat your brightly colored vegetables first and you finish off with the potatoes and the Yorkshire pudding because the brightly colored vegetables sort of start the digestion process and make it easier for your body to digest everything else. And the last thing that you eat are the starches. So that's the potatoes. And those are then, because your body has been kick-started mm -hmm. into eating, right, then, and digesting, yeah, right, it's easier for your body then to digest those starches. Right? That's and that, I was sort of like, oh, right, now that's interesting. I thought it's a simple straightforward piece of information but that is interesting but to learn about the order of the other things on the plate i'm going to put a plug in for fit for my age you'll be able to sure. uh, listen to that and you'll be able to sort of get the whole story because yeah. all that temptation you know you're tempted now another one which was very very interesting is about uh, testosterone mm -hmm. and the impact that testosterone has on men obviously we all men and women both have testosterone in our bodies men obviously have more of it and the impact that a, an incorrect level of testosterone has on a man's body and the contribution that that makes to uh, premature death in men. It is a contributing factor to every single uh, premature cause of death in men. And that was a real eye opener. Um, and, and you start to think like, yeah, we've got to learn how to understand all the different parts of how our bodies work how what we put in can obviously impact um, how our body performs in any situation and yet i think around the world there is a culture of especially a young amongst young men of well how many beers did you down you know how much beer can you drink you know the, or everybody else has drunk 10 you know why can't you and you're going it's not right for me it's not right for my body 
alcohol becomes a consum um a competitive competitive consumption in some situations and i think we need to find ways to reposition alcohol within um, the lifestyles of young men and women all over the world uh, you know, and that's something that we've got planned to cover in in fit for my age over 2020 the rest of 2024 and 2025 we don't understand alcohol we don't understand fat well enough we don't understand how different types of foods um, mix together in our body to create different types of reactions and impact how our body operates why do you think that is why do you think that we don't know enough about our very own bodies well part of it of course is because I said because they're an awful lot but part of it is that we don't talk about our bodies we don't there are parts of our bodies that are very embarrassing you know men don't know how their body is going to change as they age they don't know about the impact of their prostate on their health and how you know that's a prostate cancer is a big killer of men and yet it's very easily treated and yet people are too embarrassed to discuss it too embarrassed to go to a doctor too embarrassed to have the test and yet that simple straightforward test you know saves your life right it saves your life if you catch that cancer early enough it can be cured absolutely right? yeah it is so important we are very often we are just too embarrassed <clears throat> excuse me we are too embarrassed to discuss our health at all we're too embarrassed to discuss how our bodies are changing we're too embarrassed to discuss bodily functions we do an awful lot in terms of humor so i saw a youtube video which um, a middle-aged comedian in an american comedy club was saying you know i've reached that age and i said like uh, i'm thinking like, what age but the joke was, you know, was carrying on he said like i've reached that age where sometimes you know the best way to avoid an accident is to sit down to pee and i thought like I haven't read I'm you know that's an interesting that's an interesting thought and then his next joke was you know men reach an age where they never really want to pass a public toilet uh, they never want to waste an erection and they never want to trust a fart and I'm sorry for your language you should put a warning in but I'd say you know that was the joke and I thought that's one of the things that men don't know yeah it's like the impact of their prostate on those sorts of things yeah is just not known and yet we do need to understand the not just our bodies more and how our bodies function more but how that functionality changes as we age and i could say the same i've been reading more and more and thankfully it's in the headlines and i'm seeing videos but women in menopause they don't want to talk about it they don't even know about it they go to their doctors and many are shut down with their doctors they're fine you know they get bold enough to say it when a patient is coming to a doctor you've got to think of the mental hoops they've jumped through to bring up this embarrassing conversation that shouldn't be embarrassing but i was just going to say shouldn't be embarrassing and it shouldn't at all. be and we should have the support of our healthcare providers to mm -hmm. educate us when we haven't been Yes, and it also has to be said, we need I'll speak as an HR professional. Yeah. We also need the support of our employers in those situations. Yeah. You know, this idea that, you know, if if we are expected to stay longer in in work, we don't retire as early. We have to accept that employing older people will create needs which need to be addressed. So yeah people as they get older will need to use the lavatory more often they need to go to the restrooms more often right that's a simple fact of life it just needs to be incorporated into the rules the regulations the management approaches that allow people to do that it shouldn't be a subject of embarrassment it shouldn't be um, something where people have to feel as if they have to ask permission to be old or to be right. older right. it's just we have to understand everybody how our bodies age and how we need to adapt in order to be fit for our age when you before you started this were you always an active person 
Oh, no. <laughs> no, really? Okay, tell tell me your process on that. Why you were active and... <laughs> oh, I, I think, I think um, the number of people that I have met as a result of doing Fit For My Age who have had one of those life-changing experiences. And for me, it was um, being in my car, waiting at a junction for the traffic to clear and you know, pull out. Um, it was actually a roundabout, but you don't have those in North America, so you won't know we what We do I'm have about. roundabouts. Thank you very much. You do? I we have never seen one. On any do. Of we have trips, several but... here in Springfield, Missouri. We have at least, I think, five. Oh, well, yeah, five is a good number. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about there. You're yeah. waiting at the junction and you're focused on on the traffic that's coming around. So you're waiting for your spot to actually join that and go around all this sort of stuff. So one day I'm in a queue of traffic waiting for that. And all of a sudden there is this bang. My car is hit from behind and it's like, whoa, what happened there? And you know, everybody sort of got out of the car, the police arrived, they were passing and they helped us sort everything out and all this sort of stuff. And then the following day, I'm in the doctors and recounting what has happened and describing just how ill I felt as oh. a result. And then one of the things that came out of my mouth was that, you know, if I managed to keep the car in a straight line, but if I had veered off to the to the left a little bit, because we drive on the left here, so I would have gone off the road and down an embankment and onto a railway line. And who knows what might have happened then? And it was just, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But your mind starts to think, oh, what could have happened? What could have happened? And then you think to yourself, well, actually, life isn't forever. You know, you, it could be taken from you at any point. Who knows what is going to happen in the next 15 minutes? And there was this, this moment, like so many of the people that I've met on Fit For My Age, where you can say, there was this moment. And I realized that, you know, if I'm going to live, I want to live in a healthy way. I want to make the most of the gift of life that I have been given. And that means let's get fit. Yeah. You know, let's, let's start, you know, walking. I'll walk. I'll move, I'll park at the far end of the car park in the supermarket and, you know, I'll walk that extra little bit of distance. I will, you know, I'll walk, I'll walk, I'll run, I'll join a gym all sorts of different things to just get fitter. Um, my waistline dropped, uh, my chest grew, it became more defined. Um, I can't quite do the old flicking of the pecs to time to music, but I can flick my pecs. And for a man of my age, I'm feeling fit for my age because I can do yeah. that. I'm... <laughs> Trina, you have got me talking about things on to the world that, like, you know, good. <laughs> I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. But, but it but, also know. it builds confidence when you know there that feeling good from the inside glows on the outside, and it it just it makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes a huge, huge difference when you sort of go like, yeah, I can be on a on a car journey, pull into a service station and be looking at the fast food or looking at the shop that is selling a sandwich. Right. And you realize that, you know, selling a sandwich or a salad and realizing that the bread is just an alternative to the knife and fork. So drop the bread, use a knife and fork, buy a salad. It's like a flavor explosion in your mouth with all the different things. It's nothing's greasy. And you, you feel different after you've eaten the right type of food. Yeah. Right. There is a mental impact as well as a physiological impact when you eat the right type of food. It doesn't take any longer to prepare. It's no more expensive. Very often it's cheaper and you have a different type of, uh, you have a different type of day. Yeah. Why have an egg sandwich when you can have a hard boiled egg? Right. And it, it's simple things like that. Try having a hard boiled egg instead of an eggs hard instead of a hard boiled egg in a sandwich it gives you a protein boost without the carbs from the bread and as anyone who starts to get involved in understanding the food that goes into their diet 
into their body, food is the devil. Sorry, edit that bit out. It's not food is the de devil. Bread is the devil. There is, you know, it's, it has its functions, but it is not good on so many counts. It shouldn't become a major part of your diet. So edit out the bread. The... <laughs> well, it's all thing. It goes back to moderation, knowing why you're eating yes. certain things. I personally, as a runner, benefit from a certain amount of carbs, and I can't be afraid of that. But it's knowing which whole grains to incorporate into your diet. And I think you're bringing up a very good point. Know what you're eating and why. You yes. know, the why is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I run uh, training courses and I've done training courses for so long. I won't tell you how many years. Yeah. But a lot of the time I was working in high tech and our training courses would be run in hotels. One of the We would use one of the very, very big chains an awful lot because we knew that we could get, fly anywhere in the world. The training room would be the same and all of the facilities that we needed would be there. The number of times, though, that we would have conversations with hotel managers about the food that they provided for lunch and trying to explain to them that you know, for a trainer to do that after lunch slot where everybody's had loads of carbs because it's easy for the hotel to provide fried food. It's easy to provide sandwiches. It's yeah. easy to provide things which you don't want people to eat really when you're wanting them to be alert and learning in the afternoon. And as a result of you know, Fit For My Age, I've spoken to dietitians and nutritionists who've explained, yeah, if you want people to be alert immediately after they've eaten, then don't give them carbs. But if you want to run a marathon, eat your carbs. You're going yeah, to need the energy. Exactly. You know, anyone who's gone to the gym first thing in the morning without having breakfast first is going to know, you know, you need carbs if you're going to be energetic. You really do. But you don't need them when you're not going to be active because your body goes into a, a mode where we've got to process all of these carbs. And as a result of Fit For My Age, I... I've spoken to people who've explained to me how organs in my body that I didn't even know I had. That's embarrassing. I didn't even, you know, I, well, I must've known that they were there, but I didn't know how they worked. I didn't know how they dealt with the food and how all of the different parts of our body work together to create what is, a, you know, the gift of life, this magnificent thing that we walk around in. And I didn't know, but I do now. And I know as a result of, making those programs just how not careful you need to be it's just you understand and when you start making those choices they they stop being choices they stop being positive choices it just becomes a habit and you you get such a wide range of different flavors and experiences as a result of being more active in your food choices What's the overall fitness culture, health and wellness culture like in the UK? Because I know the US has made the news for years for being overweight, obese, not wanting to exercise. Is it the same there? I think we have to be honest and sort of say that it's probably the same across the whole of the Western developed world. Mm. We all take the easy options. Uh, one guest recently who was talking about how we no longer make enough of our own food. Yeah. You know, everything is bought. Cakes, for example, if you buy something that has a long shelf life, it has things in it to preserve it. Yeah. If you made that at home, it would probably go stale within, you know, bread at home is fantastic homemade bread but it doesn't last as long as the loaf that you buy from the supermarket. The supermarket loaf has been designed to move from a bakery to a shop or to, from a shop, to, sorry, from a bakery to a warehouse, to a shop, to sit on the shelf, you buy it, and then you're going to eat it over two or three days, probably. Mm -hmm. Homemade bread, you're best eating it on the day that you make it, yeah. but it's beautiful, yeah. but it doesn't have that preservatives. You know, if you grow some of your own vegetables, grow some of your own herbs, you know, we, we have got so used to purchasing before we consume rather than growing before we consume. Yeah. So 
we're try starting to see more people get involved in that. But I think, you know, the reality is that um, ac across the world, you have people assuming that it's okay to eat whatever they want, regardless. Mm -hmm. And there will be a health service There's who will pick up the pieces. And we are learning in the UK that, you know, we cannot rely upon uh, health services to be there for everything because the demand is just so huge. Yeah. We have to take responsibility for our own health and the best way to preserve a good health service is not to use it. So we have to <laughs> be proactive about our own health to make sure that we don't need to use health services, doctors, dentists, all these sorts of things. And that was like one of the very first episodes of Fit For My Age, somebody saying, not enough people take enough responsibility for their own health. And even if we just take a little bit of responsibility, made some responsible decisions about informed responsible decisions, we will end up being fitter, being healthier. When we don't have that information, you could say we're making decisions without information, but we owe it to ourselves. We have the responsibility to learn what makes our bodies work what makes our bodies stop working and how our bodies can work more effectively and the the knock-on effect of physical health on mental health we need to make that connection right and think what foods are going to get, put me in a good mood what moods are going to give me a psychological high and then there'll be a drop you know, mm -hmm. we don't understand all of that it's just mm -hmm. and that i think it's better to focus on that than to think oh well you know there's always going to be the fat person on the beach there's always going to be the fat person who's wearing clothes which were designed for thin people but they think they're thin you know and then but they're not but i'm not going to criticize them for their choices that's their choice you know the best piece of feedback that i ever had from any episode of any of the podcasts that i've been involved in producing was you didn't tell me what to think but you made me think and that's all that we aim to do on, on Fit For My Age is here's the information. If you listen, if it made you think, then my day is, my day is better as a result of that. I think that's an excellent descriptor. And I think that's a great way to have a lot of relationships and conversations. You know, let's mm -hmm. open the conversation and share information. I, I mean, you you do you, I'll do me, but let's at least, you know, Share some information. You, we can learn from one another if we'll just stop and listen a little bit. That is such an important point. And one of the things I would say is that parents, grandparents need to share more information about their own health history with the younger generations. Yeah. If you know that in your genetic pool, your gene pool, there is a history of heart disease, of diabetes, of um, liver disease. If you know that that is one of the things that people in your family that you are a blood relative of have suffered from, maybe even died from as a result, you need to know, you need to make sure that your general practitioner is aware, and then you need to be thinking about, okay, what decisions can I make that will delay the onset of something which exists in my gene pool. Mm -hmm. Maybe even I can avoid it altogether. Yeah. But we need to know about the history of our families so that one of those very important communications, conversations that you mentioned people having is that idea that, yeah, I'm a grandparent. My grandparents had this. I need to pass that information on to my children and my grandchildren so that we all know and can make informed health related diet fitness decisions and enjoy a better quality of life for a longer period of time excellent i agree i i think that goes back a lot to embarrassing things nobody wants to share so they deal with it and don't tell and then down the line someone needs that information so definitely yes. we should be sharing more that's it Excellent point. Now, what about, what's the one thing that you've yet to cover on your podcast that you want answers for? Oh, 
there are so many because there's so many parts of um, the human body. There's so many aspects to health, so many aspects to fitness. I would like to talk to people who've got that illness or that health condition that nobody seems to know or understand about. I would like to raise awareness of those issues so that somebody will understand something and that starts the conversation. So you know, I don't care how vague it is. I don't care how few people have that condition. I think I want to cover that on Fit For My Age. I think part of what is so great is that we learn about how people deal with, how they cope with the restrictions that come with a particular condition. And then with my HR hat on again, I'm thinking if more employers understand that condition, more employers can put in place things that make it easier for people to work. If more colleagues understand conditions, then fewer embarrassing questions are asked and more supportive questions are asked instead. Because it's like, what can I do to help you to contribute to the team that we're all part of? How can I make your life, you know, more, how can I level your life up in terms of everybody else that works here? How can we level the playing field? Because illnesses, conditions are not something to be embarrassed about. They're not something to be endured in silence. The more that we understand, the more that we know, the easier they will become to live with. So I'm interested in any health condition that no one has heard about or no one's heard being talked about. I want to talk about those health conditions and I want to help raise awareness of them. All right. So maybe that person is listening. How do they get in touch with you? They can visit me on, well, I have an Instagram account. Okay. I, am, I, am, I have an Instagram account, which is called Fit For My Age. There is uh, the Abbasida website, and Abbasida is Alpha Bravo Echo Charlie Echo Delta Echo Romeo dot co dot UK. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, but yeah, it'd be nice if people contacted me via Instagram or the Abbasida website as well. That would be great. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you so much for sharing about what you're learning with other people and helping to normalize some of these questions that come up throughout our lives. Appreciate it very much. Be sure you're following along. You can link over and listen to the Run Radio podcast on any platform you like, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, connect all at runradio.net. Thanks again, Michael. Pleasure. Thank you.